I didn't get the color of the mat. There are different colors. There are colors that are opaque and there's colors that are translucent. Um, on our boats, we would want to use an opaque, probably white uh, or blue if you got a blue boat. Um, we got a, a hunter light blue and we got some M boats that are dark blue. Um, you just, what, what you do is you put your thickening agent into your white gel coat first because the white gel coat is very opaque be able to see through it. Start adding your color to it a little bit at a time until you until you get it to match the hull. And you don't want to catalyze it yet. You want to, you want to make sure that you've got this all mixed in, got your colors all nice. Uh, and then you want to put your catalyst in because as soon as you put your catalyst in, you're only going to have about five minutes to work with it before it goes off. And you don't want to mix very much. You want to mix, mix maybe maybe at the most a tablespoonful. Because a tablespoonful, once you get the uh, thickening agent into it, uh, will give you a, um, enough that you can get it screeded out and make it look nice before it kicks off. Uh, the hardener for a tablespoon is probably going to be about four or five drops. Oh, I see what you're saying. We'll do it. And you want to put, I use Cavacil. Uh, that's a mined mineral uh, that works really good for thickening and it, it polishes really nice in the end. Um, if you don't want to, if you can't find Cavacil or don't know where to get it, West Marine sells a, a couple of different thickening agents. Um, if you don't want to buy something like that, baby powder or topping powder works really good for thickening the resin. Gives you a nice, um, kind of a, almost like a whipped cream uh, consistency that screeds out really nice. Uh, and then it also buffs really nice once you've sanded it out. Okay, so Roger was asking about shrinkage. If we were going to do a deep uh, gouge uh, and we had to fill it with a, a lot of material, yes, it's going to shrink. So what I would do is I would still screen it off even with it. I'd put the saran wrap or wax paper or tape over the top of it, uh, let it cure, rough it up a little bit because it's going to shrink back a little bit and then put your top coat on top of that. It may even, it may even go three times to get it filled and, and smooth the surface. But if you, if you build it up on top a lot, then you end up doing a lot of sanding. You're liable to, to damage the gel coat that's near it. Uh, so if you can screen it off, even with the gel coat that's there, it takes a minimal amount of sanding and buffing and polishing and you're, and you're done. If you had a big old where you really got into or even broke through, like so, you would want to go on the inside and you'd want to fare this out like this and then lay layers of glass cloth into there this way. building them up to this, this fair end that you had here. Layers of glass cloth like this up to, up to about the last layer of cloth. And then you can fill the top with your gel coat. Uh, I would normally start with maybe something around a 120, 180 grit uh, sandpaper and then, then go to like a 240 grit sandpaper, which is like this here. Um, and then to uh, a 400 and a 600. 600 grit sandpaper feels like this. So you feel this when you come up here. And I would do the last couple uh, sandings with the like a 400 and 600 grit. Do them wet. Keep your hull wet and keep your sandpaper wet. And always use your, your sandpaper wrapped around a, a block. That's gonna keep the, the surface smooth uh, and it's not going to get dips in, and, and uh, lumps in it. So sand it always smooth with a, with a sanding block. And then just use your regular uh, wax that you would normally use on your wax after you get done with the 600 grit. You should be able to buff it out, wax it, and you shouldn't be able to tell where that repair is. It should come out just exactly like the hull itself. And I got a, a gouge in here that I did uh, without Joe's help. Um, I got a stress crack here that I created and I've got a hole here so what I've done is I've kind of blended this out like I said kind of fared it out smooth I took a countersink and I countersunk the hole so I've got some area to fill where the hole is and I'm gonna take this uh, church key and open this crack up just a little bit here So now I got a nice stress crack there. Um, I was talking about, I forgot about this, I was talking about the differences between uh, glass cloth 
and this mat. It's kind of like the difference between plywood and this particle board. So if you were building something that was, you know, really, really nice and you wanted it very strong, would you use the particle board or would you use the, the plywood? You use the plywood to get it strong. It's the same thing. You got nice long grains here that are moving in opposite directions and here you just kind of got some random stuff stuck together. Okay, so you'll probably want to wear some rubber gloves. All right, so we're going to start with just a little bit of the, uh, of the gel coat. I'm going to go with... So that's two uh, half teaspoons. So I got a teaspoon full of gel coat in there. Popsicle sticks are good. Have your grandkids save popsicle sticks for you. And then I'm going to add some cabocil, or like I say, you can use talcum powder, baby powder, something like that to it. And one of the things you always want to make sure that you do is to clean that the surface of your repair. Kind of rough it up around where your repair is going to be. You don't want to touch any of these surfaces with your bare hands. Um, if you do, you're going to want to make sure that you wipe everything down with acetone because you want it really, really clean. Um, otherwise, it's not going to stick. And so we're going to put a couple of drops of the curing agent or catalyst that we're using here is a, is a liquid and it's a methyl ethyl ketone peroxide uh, <laughs> or MEKP. Um, it comes in either a, a liquid like this or it comes in a paste. Um, I like the liquid stuff. I'm going to make sure this is mixed pretty good because you've got to get that around all those molecules so they can start rubbing up against each other and getting excited. How much working time do you have with that? Uh, maybe five minutes. Definitely don't want to try to do this in the bright sun. It'll go off before you even get it on the hull. Now this will thin it down just a little bit also. Okay, so I use a single edge razor blades work really good for a screed. I can pick it up. Or this is a piece of spring steel that I, I use. I've got some di different ones with different radiuses on it and stuff like that to get into corners. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this in all of my repairs. So I got the, the rusty Marsha gouge here. <laughs> I got the stress crack here. And the gel hole. And then the, uh, the uh, fire extinguisher in the wrong place hole. Make sure I get it into there really good. And see, I got a lot left over. So even uh, two uh, half teaspoons or a teaspoonful was, was way enough. Oops. Okay, so get down here where I can see what I'm doing here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, single edge razor blade and I'm just going to run right over the top and screen it off. Like that. It's kind of like spackling walls. Like that, and there's our stress crack. And that's about all we want to do right now. Um, I'm going to use the scotch tape over our stress crack. I think I'll put the saran wrap over the rest of it. I say wax paper works good too. Um, anything to keep the air, keep the uh, keep it warm. So it has to be tight to it, otherwise it will not um, work. No. I like the, the the scotch tape because it really uh, lays better. <coughs> That's about it.